OK, so now we come to some examples of how uh, we might be asked questions about binomial expansion. And the most common type is when you are asked to find one specific term uh, in the expansion. OK, um, so we have here, uh, find the x cubed term in the expansion of uh, x plus 2 to the power of 7. OK, so this expansion will go from x to the power of 7 to some multiple of x to the power of 6 all the way down to 2 to the power of 7. OK, in there somewhere will be an x cubed term. OK, and we've got to find it. Uh, OK, so we can look back at our formula, and this here is the general term of the formula, and that's going to be our most helpful thing in lots of these questions. OK, um, because this describes any term. OK, so let's assume that it's describing the x cubed term for this example. Um, and start filling in whatever we can, okay? Which things do we know already? Uh, well, we know uh, n, 7. Uh, we know a is x. Uh, we know 7 again. And we know b is 2, positive 2. Okay, and it looks like we're basically just missing r. Okay, and uh, I'm not actually going to calculate r necessarily. Uh, I'm going to say that the next bit of information I know is that I want to have x cubed. That's what I'm trying to look for. So I'm just going to force x to have the power of 3. Now, we said before uh, that the power of a and the power of b add up to n. Okay, so the power of x and the power of 2 should add up to 7. Okay, so this tells me that the power of 2 is 4. Okay, and you will notice that um, r and r are both here and here, so uh, this number is going to be the same. Uh, so we're going to have a 4 here as well inside this uh, combination calculation. So uh, 7 choose 4 uh, times 2 to the power of 4 is 16 times x cubed. Okay, uh, so we could do our 7 choose 4 calculation. Uh, you could probably use a calculator for this, um, but let's just have a look quickly. Do some cancellation. Uh, and 6 is the same as 3 times 2, uh, so we have 35. 35 times 16 times x cubed. Okay, and that's going to equal 560 x cubed. Okay, and well, you may have seen below already, I've written out the full uh, expansion, although I didn't, we don't have to in this question at all, um, but this is just to show you um, what this answer means. Okay, again, we're just finding one of eight terms. Um, this one here. Okay, um, just somewhere in the middle of the expansion. Okay, so that's done. We found the x cubed term. Okay, so how can it get uh, harder than that? Uh, well, this is only a tiny little bit harder. Um, this is going to be quite similar, so let's just dive straight in. Okay, uh, similar style of question. I'm going to use the general term of the formula again and start filling in what I know. I know that n is 8, I know that uh, a is 2x, uh, I know that b is minus 5, that's important, you could easily uh, miss that. Now again, I'm just going to choose the power of x to be, well, in this case, 6. Okay, and I know that the power of a and the power of b should add up to 8 this time, so the power of minus 5 will be 2, so minus 5 squared. And then, um, well, that power of b is also going to be our r value to go on the bottom here. And now we simply have a calculation to do. Uh, but there are two uh, big things that students miss um, from now to the end of the question. Uh, sorry. The first thing is... Here, second thing is here. Um, what I mean by that first thing 
is, um, well, sorry, h choose 2 quickly is uh, 28. Okay, but students will often write 2x to the power of 6. Okay, that seems logical, but no. Okay, what does 2x to the power of 6 mean? It means 2 times x times 2 times x times 2 times x and so on. Okay, so you're actually doing 2 to the power of 6 as well. Okay, and a very common mistake as well is to get this minus 5 squared and write minus 25. Uh, no, minus 5 times minus 5 actually no, is positive. 25. Okay, so 28 times uh, 64 times 25 times x to the power of 6 uh, equals, uh, I don't have it prepared, ah yes, 44,800 x to the power of 6. Okay, um, and this maybe bigger than other numbers in the exam, but this is actually um, uh, something you always see in binomial expansion questions. You can very easily get six, seven, or even eight digit answers. Don't be alarmed. It's very normal. Okay, uh, so there's a couple more ways that I'm going to show you uh, for how uh, these questions can get harder. Um, so, uh, this looks quite similar to start off with, but I do have an x squared now uh, as one of my the terms inside the bracket. Um, before I just had x and 2x, but now I have a power of x inside as well. Okay, so we're still going to start off with our general term as our uh, starting off point. And we're still going to fill in what we know. This time a is x squared, there's a power inside there. And I've got another negative. Okay, now here comes the tricky bit for some. Um, so many students will be tempted to write uh, 8 here, okay, um, because they want a power of 8. Okay, but uh, this, okay, if you simplified it or Sort of expanded, uh, you would get x to the power of 16, and that's not the term you're looking for. You're looking for the x to the power of 8 term. That should be your final result. Okay, um, so, uh, well, what power do you need to put here uh, to find, to get eight, uh, x to the power of 8 eventually? You would need the power of 4. Okay, then you can find this power, and then this is another mistake students will make. Uh, they will think that because this eventually gets you x to the power of 8, that this and this would add up, should add up to 9. But that is not true. Okay, uh, It's this power alone and this power that should add up to 9. Okay, um, So it's 4 plus something equals 9, not 8 plus something. So 4 plus 5 equals 9, so that's your power, and that's your R value. Okay, and now you can simply do uh, your calculation. Uh, 9 choose 5 is 126. Um, minus 4 to the power of 5 is negative uh, 1024. And x squared to the power of 4 is x to the power of 8, as we desired. Um, okay, final calculation. Gives us 129,024x uh, to the power of 8. Okay, um, and one note here is that, uh, well, I've written all these questions as find this term, find this term. Um, one of the style of the question is uh, find the coefficient of the uh, x to the power of 8 term, for example. Okay, and this is going to be almost the exact same process for the whole question, uh, except that you get to your final term, okay, and well, what you just need to realize what coefficient means. Coefficient just means 
there's a number that you're multiplying your power of x by. Okay, so if it asks for a coefficient, the answer would just be this number minus 129,024. If it asks for the term, it needs the whole term with your powers of x as well. Okay. And uh, finally for today, um, this is one of the hardest styles of question. Uh, there might be one or two that they throw in um, that gets a bit trickier. Okay, sometimes they have an unknown a or b, uh, possibly even an unknown n, and they tell you the term, and you've got to do a bit of a reversal. Um, but it all still uses the same techniques and the same theory. Okay, um, but here, this is already uh, very tricky. Okay, because not only do we have a power of x as our in our a here, we have more x's in our b term, and that's going to really complicate things. Okay, um, let's see why. Um, so f the first way we could do this is just by trying to spot a pattern. Okay, so let's just see what what's going to happen with this full expansion. Well, firstly. Um, we're going to have a to the power of 6 and b to the power of 0. Okay, um, We're going to have uh, n choose r, which I'm just going to ignore for now. And in fact, I'm going to ignore all coefficients um, while I'm just trying to spot patterns. So I'm just going to ignore that 2. I'm going to ignore that minus 3. Um, sorry, note that I've put, instead of over x, I've put x to the power of minus 1. Um, I think that's going to be easier with our powers. Okay, um, so that would be our second term, ignoring the coefficients again. And um, then we have n choose r times, um, again, ignoring the 2 and ignoring the minus 3, I'd have these powers. Okay, a still just decreasing by 1, b still increasing by 1 in every term. Okay, and I'm ignoring the coefficients because what I... I'm interested in is the final power of x in each term. So here I have x squared to the power of 6 and uh, this and something to the power of 0 which would just be 1 so this would be uh, something times x to the power of 12. Um, here though I have x to the power of 10 uh, with some coefficients times so coefficient times x to the power of minus 1. And then those would combine to get x to the power of 9. Okay, and uh, again, just ignoring all coefficients. I'm not going to say it again. Um, we have x to the power of 8, x to the power of minus 2. That would combine to get x to the power of 6. Now, in these types of questions, you're actually always going to get... Um, basically an arithmetic sequence of powers of x. Okay, um, I've gone from 12 to 9 to 6, and you can probably tell that it's then going to have x cubed and then x to the power of 0. Okay, and what we didn't say at the start was another tricky thing about this question is, uh, what does constant term mean? Uh, constant term means uh, that's, that it's almost just a number. Okay, it's uh, x, it's basically going to be the x to the power of zero term. So um, we're trying to find the x to the power of zero term, and in fact the powers of x in this question will go negative for the last two terms. Okay, um, so we could, we could find the fifth term, uh, we could figure out what that would be, um, but let's see another method of finding which term to look for. Quickly, um, this is more of an algebraic method. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to take the uh, general term. Which was this. Okay, um, but again, I'm going to completely ignore coefficients um, until I find r. Okay, and r is what I'm looking for here. If I find r, I can just do all my calculations and then I'm done. So, ignoring all coefficients, this is, uh, these will be my powers of x. 
Okay, and I can use uh, basic exponent rules um, to multiply here and multiply here. Okay, and then another exponent rule, an addition rule, uh, to say that this would be 12 minus 3r. Okay, and at this point, I know that I want x to the power of 0, so I'm, I'm going to set it equal to x to the power of uh, 0, uh, and I can just equate uh, exponents and solve for r. So r would be 4. Okay, so now I've found r. Uh, I can go back to my general term formula and just start filling in everything. So I've got 6, choose 4. I've got 2x squared. Now I do need the coefficients um, because we're actually trying to find an exact answer now. Okay, 6 minus 4 was 2 and r was 4. Okay, uh, so 6 choose 4 uh, is 15. Okay, remember that it's 2 squared as well, so I've got 4 here. Um, remember that it's minus 3 to the power of 4. That's uh, 81. And then I could I could do my powers of x. I could just assume that it's all going to cancel to x to the power of 0, but maybe I should just check anyway. I've got x to the power of 4 times x to the power of minus 4, and yes, that would give me x to the power of 0. Um, so I multiply, I get x to the power of 0, uh, which is just 1, so just 4,816. Okay, so I have some x to the power of 12 term, x to the power of 9, 6, 3, and then just seemingly a number by itself. That is the constant term. Okay.